Folks, uh, hello and welcome to our section here on sensitivity analysis. What I want to do to get us started here is to go through the example that's uh, in the beginning of Chapter 4, and uh, hopefully this uh, lays the groundwork for your reading and, uh, and study on the uh, application of sensitivity analysis. What I have done is I have set up this problem in my own Excel sheet. Uh, the cell references uh, are exactly the way that you see them in the book. And uh, so that way, uh, as we go through uh, all the, uh, the Excel inputs, there shouldn't be uh, any confusion here as we do that. Uh, very quickly, the way the problem is set up in the, in the spreadsheet here, uh, first of all, the, uh, the objective of this problem is to maximize your profit. Obviously, you're making uh, two types of hot tubs here, an aqua spa and a hydrolux. The profit of an aqua spa is $350 per spa and $300 per spa for a hydrolux. And the problem is constrained, as you see here. Uh, you uh, have a limited number of pumps. You have 200 pumps. Each spa requires one each. Uh, labor, it looks like you have 1,566 hours of labor, uh, nine hours for an aqua spa, six hours for a hydrolux. And then you have tubing. I assume this is probably in feet. Uh, and you have uh, 2,880 feet of tubing to use. You require 12 feet for an aqua spa and 16 for a Hydrolux. Uh, the formulas that I have in, uh, let's see, in the objective uh, cell here, cell D6, uh, takes the sum product of the decision variables times the unit profits. And similarly for uh, the, in the constraint section here, the pumps that are used will be, again, decision variables times the respective number per spa, and then the same for labor and for tubing. And these, uh, these equations match exactly what you see in the book. One other thing here before we go ahead and solve the problem and then query for sensitivity data, as a reminder, the first, uh, the first Excel ex exercise that we had, I asked you very explicitly to tell me what um, the optimal solution of a linear programming problem is. And remember, the optimal solution is the mix of decision variables. So once the model is solved, the values of uh, these two cells, uh, B5, B6, which relate, again, respectively, to the number of aqua spas and hydroluxes, those uh, two values represent your optimal solution. The total profit here, in this case, we're looking to maximize profit. Uh, that's simply the value of the objective function, but it is not the optimal solution. It's the mix of decision variables. So uh, let's go through now and uh, set this up in Excel and then get the sensitivity report. And when that's Obviously, what we want to focus on this year, this week, is uh, what's going on in this sensitivity report. Uh, again, uh, really just telling us how sensitive our solution is to changes in uh, objective function coefficients or uh, available resources, which obviously is a great option uh, for you as managers. So let's go to the Data tab and go over here to Solver. And uh, we've got a fresh Solver window here, and we'll set this up. So first of all, the objective function. In this case, is in cell D6, so we'll just click on D6, and that will be uh, entered into the uh, template here. We want to maximize the objective function, so we've got the max radio button selected. Uh, the two decision variables, if I just enter my cursor into that cell and then click on B5, hold it down, and scroll it over to the right, I'll pick up uh, C5 as well. And then, uh, let's see, constraints, I think we can do this all at once. Let's see, what we're going to add is uh, the, the used calculations on the constraints must be less than or equal to, and I have already got that uh, inequality symbol chosen here, and that will be the corresponding values in E9, uh, 10, and 11. And we can add that. Uh, excuse me, I guess I should have hit OK. Let's just do that again real quick. Apologize for that, and we should be good to go. Uh, actually, let's delete that. We've got one in there. Okay. And let's see, we're going to make the, uh, the decision variables non-negative. We can do that by checking this checkbox, and we'll be ready to go. Uh, as you saw in my notes, remember, there's three types of solver, solvers here in Excel. Uh, whenever you want sensitivity data, you must use the simplex LP solver in order to get your sensitivity analysis. So make sure you have the simplex LP uh, solver chosen, and then you can hit the solve button. And I hope that this matches what you see in your book, that you're going to make 122 aqua spas and 78 hydroluxes in order to maximize your profit. In this case, you're going to make, it looks like, about $66,100. Uh, and let's see, the constraints here. It looks like we used all of our pumps. It looks like we used all of our labor. 
and it looks like we used almost all but not all of our tubing. So from a constraint standpoint, uh, as you've gone through the reading, you will notice that pumps and labor would be what we consider to be binding constraints since we used all of the resource here. And the tubing constraint is non-binding since it uh, we didn't use all the tubing that was available. So once we've solved the model, the next thing we want to do is get the sensitivity report. And we must do that immediately following uh, solving the model. So now let's click on sensitivity, click OK. And then down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you have your sensitivity report. So let's see what this is all about. Uh, and let me see if I can uh, blow this up for you a little bit. Let's see if we can make everything bold as well. That way I think that'll make this all, hopefully that's all. So we can probably even go a couple more here. And so hopefully everybody can see this. Uh, and again, this corresponds exactly with what you see in your book. So again, we've solved the model. What we want to know now is how sensitive is the optimal solution to changes in uh, objective function coefficients and uh, changes in uh, resource value. So let me first start by saying, notice that there are two sections to this sensitivity report. There's the top half here that deals with your decision variables, and then there's the bottom half here that uh, corresponds with the constraints. So let's, uh, so let's just look at what's going on here. We already know for the aqua spas, uh, we're gonna make 122 of them. Uh, I'm gonna come back to reduce cost uh, I'll talk about that last in the variable cell or variable section of the report. Uh, the objective function coefficient, that again tells us the amount of profit that uh, we make for each aqua spa that we build. Now, so the first thing we want to talk about here is what does this uh, allowable increase, allowable decrease means? What this says is that this establishes the bounds by which the objective function coefficient for aqua spas can change without changing the optimal solution. So the point being here, notice that the allowable decrease is $50. If let's say that the, the price or the, the profit of an aqua spa went down to $302, and, and that change is certainly less than $50. So the objective function here, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the optimal solution of 122 aqua spas and 78 hydroluxes will not change. Obviously, the profit will change because you're make, you're getting less profit for each type of aqua spa, but the objective, uh, or the sorry, the optimal solution, which again is the mix of decision variables, will not change. Uh, conversely, let's say that uh, the profit of an aqua spa went from 350 to 445 dollars. Let's say that it increased by 95 dollars. The idea is still the same. The optimal solution doesn't change. Uh, the objective function would, but since the change, uh, the increase in profit is within the allowable increase, there is no change in the optimal solution. Conversely, let's say that uh, the price or the profit of an aqua spa decreased by $60. Uh, since that change extends below uh, the bottom uh, or below essentially a th the $300 threshold, 350 minus 50, anything less than $300, uh, you will have a change in your optimal solution. Similarly, let's say uh, that uh, the profit for an aqua spa went to uh, $455, an increase of $105. The same thing would apply here. You would, you would have a change in the optimal solution. Obviously, you have a change in the objective function, but what we're interested in here is the optimal solution. So allowable increase and decrease here uh, for both coefficients, it has the same application. So essentially what you're saying here is, as long as the profit of an aqua spa stays between $300 and $450, this is not going to change. As long as the uh, profit of a Hydrolux stays within what that looks like about $233 and $350, this will stay the same. Now, the reduced cost. What is reduced cost? This is probably the most uh, challenging concept of the uh, sensitivity report. And essentially what this is, uh, and it'll become more clear when we go down and talk about the constraints, but it essentially says this. If I was going to make uh, one more aqua spa, what would happen to the value of the objective function? And the reduced cost here says uh, there will not be any change. And what you're going to see is uh, if I had to make one more aqua spa, what I would have to do is I would have to have the resources to make that 
And what you notice down here is that, well, right now I don't have any resources. Uh, I don't have any pumps and I don't have any labor. So it's going to cost me money to get those resources. And the cost of those resources uh, at, the, at this point are equivalent to the profit. So the value to the objective function to make one more aqua spa is a zero sum game because the cost of the resources at, uh, at the shadow prices here that we'll talk about uh, is equal to the profit in each case. So no, no value to make more based on the fact that we don't have available resources. So very quickly down here when we start talking about constraints, uh, a slightly different interpretation in the allowable increase and decrease. Let's talk about that in just a second. Uh, we know that we used 200 pumps. We had 200 available. Uh, I'm sorry, um, we had 200 available. That's the right-hand right, high, right hand side constraint. And now what we want to talk about is this idea of the shadow price. And the shadow price essentially is telling us what will happen to our objective function if we start adding pumps. And what this means is that for a unit change, either one additional pump or one less pump, if I had one more pump, uh, I could add $200 to my objective function. Similarly, if I had one less pump, my objective function would decrease by $200. Now, if the, the question then becomes, does that happen for, let's say if I could buy a thousand pumps, am I going to make $200 additional for each pump I add? And that's where we go over here and look at the allowable increase and decrease. And the relationship here between shadow price and allowable increase and decrease Essentially, what we're saying is that for each pump that we add up to seven, I will earn $200 more in profit per pump. If I decrease pumps, for every pump I decrease up to 26, I am going to lose $200 per pump, right? So again, when you, and you probably want to, or, or, Listen to this a couple times, but the immediate thing that we understand here is that allowable increase and decrease in the constraint section has a different interpretation than it does in the variables section, right? Again, remember what allowable, allowable increase and decrease are telling us here is the range in which this coefficient can vary without changing the optimal solution. Down here, allowable increase and decrease relate uh, directly to the shadow price telling us the bounds within the shadow price or what, what num or the amount that we can increase or decrease a constraint or in this case a resource in the amount, uh, of change that we're going to see, uh, in the objective function. Uh, down here, the same idea for each, uh, for each hour of labor. Remember we had, we used, uh, 1556 and we had 1566 available. What this is telling me is that for each hour that I can add up to 234 hours, I'm basically going to add about $16.67 to my uh, objective function. For each hour that I lose up to 126 hours, for each hour that I lose, I'll be losing $16.67 uh, in my objective function. Uh, now, remember that these, uh, the first two, the pumps and the labor, are both binding constraints. Let's look at our non-binding constraint. And notice that we have a shadow price of zero. So we, we only used 2,712 uh, feet of tubing, and we had 2,880. And obviously, it makes sense here that the shadow price is zero because uh, at this point, we haven't used all the resource uh, that we had. So obviously there is no value in getting more tubing at this point. And that's this one E to the 30 essentially means uh, infinity. So you can think what we're saying here is it doesn't matter how much more tubing we go by at this point. Uh, it's not going to add anything to our profit because we haven't used what we got. Uh, however, if you uh, start taking tubing away for each foot of tubing that you take away, uh, up to uh, 168 of them, uh, you will not lose anything uh, in your objective function. However, beyond that, if you say, let's to, to say that if you went beyond that, uh, you'd actually have to solve the model again to see what happens here and what happens to the shadow price. 
So I hope this is helpful. Again, uh, I expect there'll be lots of questions, but uh, this goes along with the book and should get us started. So uh, let me know if you have any questions.